Will Robin, Pat, or Larry get the funniest punchlines? These are important questions answered only on the night. So again, use that QR code on your screen if you want to send us a video. So there we go. A new one, a new yeah, one for the rotation. Very nice. Oh, thanks, awesome. thanks, Mike. <laughs> All right, number nine. If the idea of Paul Rudd narrating a docu series about nature's small animal heroes sounds like it would be a good show, well, you need to check out Tiny World on Apple TV Plus. The video is amazing too. Here's a clip about ducklings. She's small enough to use it as a nest and her eggs are safe from larger predators up here. But as soon as they hatch, her eight little ducklings must make it to the pond to feed. It's a difficult journey. They won't be able to fly for months. The instinctive bond with their mother is so strong. Uh, oh. oh no. Oh my, what the? Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Ducklings are born with soft, flexible bones. Oh, good. They're so light, <laughs> even from up here, they can survive the fall. That. Wow. Whee! And bounce oh. <laughs> like fluffy ping pong balls. Wow, who knew? Hmm. <laughs> it, looks like a, it looks like a spoof. Yeah. Mom calls her brood together. <clears throat> but there's always one straggler. Oh, boy. Oh. Oh, that, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, right. you got her keep up. Yeah, hurry up. The family there can we move on. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, all right, number eight. Uh, check out these boats. They're sleek. They're modern and they are top of the line. They're also the next generation of inflatables. What? Some of them are made with fiberglass hulls and puncture resistant tubing. Others are made with polyurethane foam. In short, they are unsinkable. Uh -huh. oh, in the, I've heard in that the industry, yeah. they're known as RIBs, rigid inflatable boats. Uh, they're often used as companions for larger boats or for diving trips. Some of them can cost up to a million dollars. I don't get what's inflatable on there. The bumpers? Well, I'm not getting one, but yeah. I can. Yeah. <laughs> Number seven. Do you know about the cougar tail? Uh, it's not what all the fellas are chasing down at happy hour at Jilly's on Rush Street. It's basically a really long donut with maple icing that's become a tradition at BYU home football games. The cougar is BYU's mascot. The pastry was created in 2003 by the guy who took charge of concessions. It's so big, 16 inches long, that they had to make new fryers in order to make it. It wasn't a big hit at first, but remember that most BYU students and fans don't drink, oh, yeah. and maybe that's why it took off. Every uh, football Saturday in fall, they sell 9,000 cougar tails. Huh. Oh, a lot of sugar. Wow. Yeah. All right, number six, it's almost time to open those chocolate advent calendars. So here's a little tip on the best time to eat those chocolate candies. According to orthodontists, it's best to wait at least an hour after you eat the chocolate to brush your teeth. And that's because foods with acid or sugar can weaken your tooth enamel, and then brushing too quickly removes the enamel. Oh, boy. And that's why you get cavities. Uh. That's why you should wait at least an hour. It's better safe than sorry. Or You've never heard this about or, coffee? Or just don't brush no. at all. <laughs> right? Don't brush don't your you teeth ever? Don't or brush. Don't brush. <laughs> when? Just, just Okay. <laughs> I don't know. You just, I, yeah. All right, number five. Have you ever seen whiskey glasses like these? Oh, yes. Look, they're sit that's, that's how they sit. They're like oh, leaning to the fun. side. That's intentional. They're made with a very thin huh. rim and a tilted design that exposes a larger area of the whiskey to air, and that put more, puts more of the aroma of the booze out there yeah. every time you take yeah. a sip. The ones here are made by Simon Pierce, which is a company funded, or founded, I should say, by an Irish-American glassblower in Vermont. 
-hmm. These are very high end and really beautiful. A yeah. set of four costs about two hundred fifty dollars, but you can find cheaper ones online for about six bucks a piece. <laughs> That's the only know? way to drink Less it. Less aroma, but. <laughs> Uh, number four, this one is for the guys. Stop making excuses for your ill-fitting denim. We're not addressing this story at anybody on this desk right now, mm -hmm. lest anybody think we are. Larry. All you need to do is follow a few simple rules. If it's too tight, it ain't right. Mm. There's no need to highlight every single bump in your road. I'm saying. Oh, you also don't want saggy or baggy. It's just sloppy and not flattering. Look for straight cut or slim cut and let the jeans fit naturally at your waist. You don't want high waisted denim. Larry. I repeat, you don't want high waisted <laughs> denim. Otherwise, you look like somebody's dad in the 90s. And you don't want low waisted either. Because let's face it, you're not Lenny Kravitz. <laughs> He's probably the only man on the planet who can get away with that look. Yeah. Long. Just regular jeans, Larry. Yeah. You don't need And that no head. braided belts either. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> and what about the what are those jeans with the uh, the real the white stitching on the side that was big in the big white stitch pockets? Oh, I don't were know. those those uh, designer like Oh like the buckle jeans? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So those are I mean Did I you don't know if those are coming back. Though? I don't see I, those. No, I don't think so. No. Uh, so I have my parachute pants if you want to see those. <laughs> I do not. <laughs> I would like you to wear those one day. Yeah. Do you still have them? No, I don't. Oh, I was I gonna don't. say. That'd be impressive. Uh, number three, here's a place that would make an amazing getaway any time of year. It's a shipping container tower in Blue Ridge, Georgia. What the heck? That's right by the Tennessee border. It's called the River Forest Lookout. This video is from Hayden and Nikki, who have a really great YouTube page called Journey More. They find unique and adventurous Airbnbs and take you along for the experience. This place is 300 bucks a night. They have openings in January, and Robin, don't worry, you don't have to carry all your stuff up 60 feet. Stop reading my mind. There's a big basket at the bottom that you can put everything <laughs> in, and you just push a button at the top, and the basket comes up. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. well, can I get a ride up too, or do I have to take? You can, but you have to no repel down. No pets in the basket. <laughs> yeah, you can just take your broom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number two, a new study shows your dog can smell when you're stressed out. The researchers at Queen's University in Belfast did experiments. Four dogs were presented with sweat and breath samples from humans before and after they had to tackle difficult math problems. With greater than 90% accuracy, the dogs could tell which samples came before the human did the math test and which came after. The scientists say the dogs probably also pick up on all sorts of cues from different ways humans behave, but this is just further evidence that they know what's going on with their owners. Hmm. All right, number one, we mentioned this a couple days ago, Marty Croft passed away over the weekend, and we've told you how he created the children's series H&R Puff and Stuff, but he also produced the Donnie and Marie Variety Show. Really? On Sunday, Donnie Osmond, credited Marty and his brother Sid for creating the whole format of that show. Uh, here's a look at the opening number from the very first episode of that show, January 23rd, 1976. I loved this show. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, my God. Hi. <laughs> I'm Donnie Osmond. You can come out now, Marie. <laughs> <laughs> and this is my kid sister. That was a great way to start a show. <laughs> they introduced both of us, and you come out with a dummy. <laughs> well, uh, I only did it to protect you. Sure. Well, that was a very dangerous skating trick, I'll have you know. I understand. Even the way I did it was difficult. Sure. Well, look, man, it's not easy working with a dummy. <clears throat> anyway, tonight, we're making television history. Right, we're the first brother and sister and dummy to host a series. Marie, now come on, will you forget about the dummy? It's over, all right? Uh, yeah, you still think it was a great show? No, <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> okay. All right, you yeah, want millions of dollars? Well, they, when they started to sing, it was good. Yeah. Yeah. Tell everyone the truth. 
Marie tried to do the trick, okay? But the problem was she couldn't get up on my shoulders. Now, that's the truth. I couldn't get up on your shoulders? Oh, yeah, no, right. make it Look stop. Look at this. I mean, it, who it's could just, fit? It's just really painful. Yeah. I mean, where's there? The problem was not I'm a little bit country. I'm a little bit rock and roll, yeah. you know? Yeah, that's going to be a lot less painful. Well, here, right, did you know right, this? Okay, Donny Osmond was 18. Marie was 16 oh my God. when this started. Really? She was 16. Because you can't They were the youngest entertainers in TV history to host their own variety show. How long was that on the air? God, well, it just goes to show when you're a kid, you don't yeah. know what. <laughs> right. I thought this was this was top notch entertainment. Yeah. You were excited when oh, the clips started. Oh my gosh! <laughs> They're gonna sing anytime now. That's gonna really start getting start yeah. cooking, Larry. Yeah. Wowie. This is the opening of the show, right? right? This is where they hook you. Wow! <laughs> they do it all. Oh, oh no, it's nutty. That's a nine at nine. Uh. <laughs>